Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Recently I reviewed the GWIC G2, a 20 watt fiber laser that I had a great time working with. Well, let me introduce you to the G2's bigger brother, the G2 Pro. They have improved on the G2 in almost every way, from making it 50% more powerful with its 30 watt laser source, to cutting the weight of the machine almost in half, making it far more portable. But do these changes make the G2 Pro the 30 watt fiber laser for you? Let's find out. Before we begin, this G2 Pro was sent to me for review by GWIC. As with all of my reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this laser for the last month. My channel does have affiliate links in the description, so if you are interested in anything you see in my videos, you can use those links to help support the work we do. We appreciate it. Now let's get into it. The GWIC G2 Pro is a 30 watt fiber laser, which produces a 1064 nanometer wavelength infrared laser. Fiber lasers are great for working with almost all metals. Think gold, silver, stainless steel, as well as dark plastics, leather, and stone. Infrared lasers do not work with wood or transparent materials like glass or clear acrylic. The jump from the original G2's 20 watts to the G2 Pro's 30 watts is a game changer. A more powerful laser means that you can engrave faster and remove more material with each pass. For instance, this brass coin took an hour to engrave, compared to two hours on the G2. The G2 Pro has two main sections. The laser source, which produces the laser beam and sends it through the fiber optic cable over to the main engine and lifting stand. The main engine consists of a pair of Galvo mirrors, which rapidly move to redirect the laser beam down through the focusing lens and onto the material you are engraving. The Galvo can move extremely fast, allowing for engraving speeds of up to 15,000 millimeters per second. The fiber laser is a pulsed laser. You can control both the power percentage of the laser and the frequency of those pulses. GWIC says that the frequency can range from 20 to 200 kHz. GWIC provides a list of recommended parameters for different materials, and most of them recommend around 1000 mm per second at 30 kHz. Higher frequencies can be helpful depending on the material. For instance, higher frequencies can act as a cleanup pass on metals. While you can push the speed up to 15,000 mm per second, I found at speeds above 8,000 you start to see the pulse frequency pattern on your materials, so you'll want to play around with power, speed, and frequency to get the most of the G2 Pro. To help position your material, the G2 Pro has an inline red laser which shines through the Galvo. This lets the software outline your design before you start to engrave. You can either trace the outer bounds or the individual shapes. I found the alignment of the red laser to be spot on, unlike the original G2s whose red laser was just slightly off. This made positioning my material very easy. The main engine rests on the lifting stand, which can raise or lower the main head in order to focus the laser. Like the G2, there are two versions of the G2 Pro. The base version has a manual lift and a work area of 110mm by 110mm. Then you have the upgraded version with an electric lift and a lens which increases the work area to 150mm by 150mm. I have the electric lift here, which has up and down arrows on the side to control it. There are three different ways of focusing the G2 Pro. The first way is probably my favorite change of the G2 Pro, using the new focal pointer. On the main head is a little pointer that slides over a ruler on the stand. The number corresponds to the distance from the workbench. If you are engraving a material that is 5mm thick, then just move the laser up until the pointer is at 5mm on the ruler, and you are focused and ready to go. This makes focusing extremely easy. The other two methods are similar to the G2. The second is by using the included ruler to measure from the top of your material to the bottom of the main engine. The focal length is 211mm for the manual lift, and 261mm for the electric lift. The third way is to use the red focus dots. This uses the inline red laser combined with a stationary red dot light on the main engine. Move the laser up and down until the two dots merge onto the surface of your material. The stand has a few more features. You can use the included screws and brackets to create a jig to help align your material, useful for batch jobs. And if the object is too large to fit on the stand, then you can remove the middle and place the laser directly on the object. The main engine can also tilt, if you need to engrave on angled surfaces. Finally, using the optional safety shield, you can remove the main engine from the stand entirely and use the G2 Pro handheld. The safety shield is the perfect focal height, so just rest it on the surface and engrave. The safety shield just slides into slots on the main engine, and it's securely attached. On the back is a built-in exhaust fan to help vent smoke and fumes. The only drawback is that the exhaust fan is USB powered, and the only connection is on the laser source. The fan cable is extremely short, so it's really only usable if the laser source is right next to the main engine. Moving from the main engine, we can follow the nicely bundled cables back to the laser source. That bundle is much nicer than the original G2's mess of wires, and it should help protect the fiber optic cable in the bundle. The laser source itself is also much smaller and lightweight than the original G2. On the front is the safety key which acts as the power switch, 
and a button to enable or disable the laser source. On the back is the power input and USB connections for your computer, the electric lift stand, safety shield fan, and optional accessories. I love the rounded look of the G2 Pro's laser source. It looks elegant and is very stable. GWIC sells optional rotary attachments that work with the G2 Pro to increase its capabilities. Both the rotary roller and the rotary chuck work flawlessly and let you engrave on round and cylindrical objects. The rotary chuck has a few different pegs so that it will work on any object that you want to engrave, from small rings to large cups. The chuck can also be angled if needed. My test with the rotary came out great. I could engrave on the surface of this aluminum can with ease, and I was even able to cut through the aluminum on my first attempt. It also created a very satisfying sound when doing so. Listen to this. Ah, very nice. The G2 Pro required almost no assembly. The stand needed four screws to attach the base, and the main engine screwed onto the stand. Then remove the backing of the adhesive on the pointer and stick it to the lift. Plug in all the cables and you're ready to go. On the software side, we now have multiple options. GWIC provides a copy of G-Laser on the included USB stick. G-Laser works great, and the G2 Pro's manual does a great job at walking through the basic functionality and settings. For those of us that prefer Lightburn, version 1.7 now supports the G2 and G2 Pro. Setup on Lightburn was also very easy, and I had no issues using either software. It's great to have the option. And while the USB stick did have the proper configuration settings for the G2 Pro, it only had a copy of the original G2 manual. Fortunately, the G2 Pro's manual was easy to find on GWIC's website. With all the features out of the way, let's look at some example engravings. I loved anodized aluminum for its ease of use. The coating is easily removed, and the G2 Pro creates very crisp engravings. Text and logos engrave very quickly thanks to the speed of the Galvo. And I am still blown away by the quality of image engraving. It is just a gorgeous contrast on this black aluminum. The G2 Pro's 30 watts of power allows for truly deep engravings on metals. Take these custom brass coins. They have about a millimeter of material completely removed in just over an hour of time, compared to about two hours on the original G2. And now that the G2 Pro works with Lightburn, you can use Lightburn's 3D slice feature to easily engrave 3D designs like this flower or wizard. The G2 Pro can also create beautiful colors on stainless steel. By varying the power and frequency, you can create a whole spectrum of colors from greens, pinks, blues, and purples. These are hues that I haven't seen from other types of laser. Besides color engraving, you can create deeper, more permanent engravings on stainless steel. Besides metals, the G2 Pro also works well on a variety of plastics. The fiber laser creates a very high contrast white engraving on dark acrylic. These 3D print log keychains look great, and the dimensional accuracy of the engraved ruler is almost spot on. Other darker plastics work well on the G2 Pro. This part was 3D printed out of a dark blue PLA, and we can see the white engraving left on the surface. Think of the possibilities of combining 3D prints with accurate and high contrast labels. Dark stone also works great. While the G2 Pro doesn't seem to remove as much material from this slate coaster as a diode laser would, the engravings are brighter and higher contrast, and I could run the G2 Pro much faster than a diode laser engraver, meaning that these coasters can be produced in a fraction of the time. Leather is also engravable on the G2 Pro. However, like my plastic tests, I found that it is very dependent on the color of the laser. Darker leathers work great, and you can engrave pretty fine details onto it. However, as you start to try lighter colored leathers, they didn't seem to engrave. They all seem not to interact with the fiber laser at all. As we saw, there are some materials on the G2 Pro that the fiber laser cannot work with. Clear or transparent materials like glass or clear plastics do not work, although you might be able to engrave glass with a dark surface treatment first. And like the lighter colored leathers, wood also does not work. So you'll want to keep those materials in mind when considering if the G2 Pro is a laser for you. So in conclusion, the GWIC G2 Pro is an excellent fiber laser that refined the features from the original G2. It has 50% more power with half of the weight, and adds quality of life features that make your workflow even easier to use. The 30 watt laser means that you can engrave quicker, which for deep engravings like brass coins can cut hours off of your engraving times. The focus ruler is a very simple addition which makes life easier. The optional accessories like the safety shield, rotary roller, and rotary chuck increases the capabilities of the G2 Pro. And now that the latest version of Lightburn supports the G2 and G2 Pro, you now have access to all of the powerful features like 3D engraving that Lightburn provides. If you're looking for a fiber laser to engrave on almost all types of metals and plastics, then the G2 Pro is an excellent choice. The manual lift version of the G2 Pro sells for $2,599 US dollars at the time of recording, and the electric lift version with a larger work area sells for $2,899 US dollars. The optional 
safety shield it is an additional 99 US dollars, and the rotary roller and chuck are $130 each. These are very competitive prices when compared to other 30 watt fiber lasers on the market. It seems that GWIC is trying to sell through their existing inventory of the original G2, so you might be able to get a good deal on the original 20 watt G2 before they sell out. However, the G2 Pro is an upgrade that makes it worth the extra cost. So thank you all for watching my review of the GWIC G2 Pro 30 watt fiber laser. I had a lot of fun making this review. What was your favorite feature? And what features do you think it's missing? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see my review of the original G2, you can find it here and see how the G2 Pro compares. I have plenty of upcoming reviews and projects, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on those. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.